Winning owner Michael Buckley is with me now. Michael, you've been in this game for many decades. You've had many good horses, but you've flown here from Florida to see this horse win the Tollworth Hurdle today. Um, how does that feel? Um, well, it's going to make the journey back out of a lot better. It would have been a gruesome time to go. No, he, he was amazing, wasn't he? I mean, he, was, he looks like a really, really good horse. Let's hope he's... He is a really good horse, but he certainly looks like one. I mentioned your long association with Nicky Henderson. You've had lots of horses that have turned up on their first novice hurdle and have won and have looked really impressive. When you saw him first time here at Sandown, did you think, oh my, I've got something very, very good on my hands? Well, I was, I was pretty surprised because Nicky was worried that he wasn't actually... Shall I turn this damn thing off? It's entirely up to you, Michael. It's not, Sorry. It's not distracting me at all. <laughs> not much. Um, distracting me. Um, he was a bit worried that the horse mightn't have been fit the first time because he hadn't been able to get on the grass with any of his horses. And, um, and, and I know with the way Nicky trains and having had one or two pretty good horses with him before that he, it's often with him that he doesn't, he doesn't work them very hard. So if they find work easy, oh God, um, that might be him now. No, it's not. It's Islay ringing, your friend who sends you her love. Islay, Islay your partner, yeah. who's calling from Florida. Yeah. So Just say I'm you're on the phone to me and you can't... You, you can't, can't turn her off. You, you can't take the call at the moment. <laughs> um, so, anyway, there it is. And he, didn't, he was worried about the ground. But you know, Nicky, you've interviewed him a thousand times. He worries about everything, bless him. Most of all, um, if you've been with him as long as I have and you're good friends, he doesn't want me to be disappointed, so that is more pressure for him. So he said to me, oh, please don't come back. It's enough pressure as it is. Um, but if I'd, if I'd woken up there and gone online and seen the front page of the Racing Post, I'd have kicked myself that I wasn't here, so here I am. Now, I know you're, you're quite easy going at times, but you're, you're demanding enough insofar as you want winners. You, you, like, to, you, like, to, you like to win races. And tell me a little bit about your relationship with, with Nicky Henderson and why it's been so enduring. Is it, is it simply because he's delivered you with, 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 with good horses that win races, or is there more to it than that? Well, I had one trainer before Nicky, a guy called Peter Bailey, and mm -hmm. won some good races. And I worked out, which was quite, which was quite smart of me, but it was for me, that choosing the trainer that suited you was really important, um, because you know you have a winning day. It doesn't really matter who trains a horse. I mean, it, today, if you trained the horse, I'd have been as happy <laughs> as if Nicky's trained the horse. It's a question of getting through the rough days. And you need, for me, because I tend to be a bit of pretty emotional fellow, you say I seem easy going, but I mean, I am I very emotional. I said sometimes you seem easy. But I am very emotional. Um, and I, so it's getting through the rough days, and there are a lot of rough days, and I've had a lot of rough days, which is what having a good horse m makes it having a good horse so special. And so I found with Nikki someone that I could get through some pretty bad days with. I mean, talking about a, a really, really good horse, the proclamation. I remember getting a letter from him the following week with all these tear stains on it. And um, we've had a lot of tears together, as well as some great times. Yeah, for those who, who don't remember, the proclamation was a, a truly brilliant horse who, who sadly lost his life not, not that long after he'd really flashed his, his early brilliance. And it's something that you've really struggled to, to, to get over in a lot of respects, isn't it? And now we're talking nearly 30 odd years ago now. 1989. Yeah. So 30, 30 33 years, years ago. Yeah, yeah he, um, Nicky told me at the time that he was the most talented horse he'd ever trained. And um, he said, I can't say he's the best horse because he's done so little. And um, he fell at Ascot, and um, and uh, it was a t it was a terrible time. I have to say, I mean, even now it feels painful. He, um, I rang him on the way to going to the opera that night, and he said he's fine, and I've got a vet who's going to pop in in the night. And then he rang me twenty past nine the next morning to say the horse couldn't stand up, and I had to go to Ascot that day to see another horse. Uh, and I remember, this is kind of bearing my soul here a bit, but got driving past the Brompton Oratory and I stopped the car and I went in and I lit 30 candles and said, I will really be a believer if you save this horse's life. 
uh, anyway, when I got to ask if he'd been put down. So, you know, listen, it, it's not good to, to dampen a really happy day with stories like that, but there are some pretty rough times as well. Having said that, you, you've got to want it, you've got to love this game an awful lot to come out of that and to keep wanting to invest in horses, to keep bringing them to the races, to keep putting yourself on that emotional roller coaster, putting yourself through that emotional ringer again. Yeah, but life's for living, isn't it, in a way? I mean, either or all of us, when we have a setback, are going to curl up and call it a day, or you just carry on and hope there's a better day around the corner, and there was one of those today, and it's wonderful. And the, you know, the, he's a gorgeous horse. He's a, he's a lovely. I was talking to Barry Geraghty this morning, and he said there's not many three-year-olds where you could let your nine-year-old daughter ride a horse, and that's, that is what this horse is is about. I mean, he's just a gentle, sweet baby of a horse and and yet he's got this engine which is magnificent you mentioned Barry Geraghty there's a nice little bit of symmetry there as well all the success he had for you particularly on your beloved Finian's rainbow and he was the man who sort of brought this horse through yeah he did and and um, he I rang him uh, last autumn so, uh, sorry the autumn before last now back here and we were just chattering and I wasn't thinking about it I said have you got any good and he said I think We've got maybe the best horse we've had since Brain Power. Um, and you know, we're going to sell it. It's going to win a point to point. We'll get a million and all this. So I said, good luck to you. Anyway, the point to pointing ended in Ireland and one thing and another. And then he came up with the sale and I bought him. And um, You didn't have to pay a million for him quite. No, no, <laughs> a lot, lots less than that. And um, sorry about all these silly stories, but he was reading the Racing Post to Paula, his wife, this morning, he was telling me. And she said, God, all those wonderful things. Why didn't that happen when you owned him, Barry? We'd have got much more money. And he said, I couldn't care less. I'm well over that. I just hope for Michael and Nick, he, he wins everything because they're friends and have been friends a long time. I mean, I happen to love Barry, so he's been a, a good friend as, to me. And, and we've won lots of races together. But he's a cracking human being. And Barry, if you're watching this, thank you. Uh, Michael, thank you. It's been um, it's been most interesting. Sorry, it was all a bit sombre, that wasn't it? Not at all. I think we've ended on a we've ended on a high, and uh, we can't. We just this is this is a sort of horse that none of us can wait to see again. It's a it's a gloomy, grim, rainy day at Sandown. You've flown in from from sunny Florida. Must, you needed a bright must star be a to shine through the gloom. It's the first time I've ever worn a hat racing, so there we go. Well, just to keep the rain off. But it, uh, see, did you notice that during the race it stopped raining? That even he can even do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> and that seems a perfect place to leave it. Michael, thank you so much. Thanks, Nick. Well nice to talk to you. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.